Well, hello guys. Welcome back. So I am actually making this well, almost Sunday. I'm actually making it late Saturday night. And the gods work in mysterious ways. As you can see, I used to be very, very much in love with the idea of being a photographer. Um, I was obsessed with taking this coin bank, it's the mass produced one, and trying to make plastic, you know, look like flesh and look like metal and look like cloth. And you can't, but, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, and I have this instant camera, you know, not instant camera, but um, Kodak. So, you know, like something you could go pick up at Walmart. No disrespect, but you know what I mean. It's not a professional high-end camera. It's one of thousands, if not millions, of people have. And I would take the picture of that and then just, you know, spend so much time working on it and trying to perfect it and trying to, you know, get the photo just so. And... I have been talking to one of you, and I know I said I gave myself a clue today. Sometimes you, you end up giving yourself a clue to what's wrong. And I said, you know, it's like the gods keep working out this drama with me. And I, I realized, because one of you said, could this dizziness, could it be, you know, stress-related? I said, yeah, it could be. I said, you know, I do get this this heavy ball, this tight ball of stress usually around this time of year because my dad's side of the family would always start drama and my mom's mother would start drama. So you would have incredible unrelenting stress from about now all the way through to New Year's Valentine's Day. We actually hated the holidays in this house. Because you had it coming from both sides. We used to call get, getting it in stereo. Neither side of the family was supporting us. And we felt like we were under fire from both sides. So, yeah, that could definitely be a, It could be stress. Because even though the, all those people are mostly dead. Um, <laughs> you can tell how much you like people when you're like, oh, they're dead now. Um, you know you still remember all the drama they brought up. You still remember how they managed to, you know, ruin every moment of the holidays. And it could definitely be that. And it could definitely be, you know, um, allergy-related. And it could definitely be stress of, you know, 2020. 2020 is a lot of stress on all of us, right? And I have this kind of push again to go watch It's a Miracle. And I, I like it because they're, they're usually pretty non-dogmatic. You've got to watch out. Sometimes they get the Christian crazies, as I call them. But when they talk about angels or God's mysterious ways or whatever, they're usually pretty non-dogmatic. And there's nothing in there that's, you know, going to make you feel bad. Most of it. Most of it. Every once in a while they sneak something in, but not usually. And they were showing this thing about this woman who goes online looking for this guy. She's been, you know, wanting to get married for a while, and she's a young thing, and this is way back in my time, and, you know, back when we had AOL and Dallop, and, yeah. And, you know, she got the Beanie Baby sitting on the yeah, computer. Yeah, it was, it was from the olden days, <laughs> back when we fought dinosaurs with laser cannons, and, oh, um... She is very specific about the kind of man she wants. She wants him to be tall, dark, and handsome, and, you know, she, 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 she's she she got all these things that today in 2020 we'd say, wow, that is superficial. You found the right guy through that? And it just, it happened to work out, at least, you know, at the time of filming, you know, they were madly in love and they'd gotten married. And, you know, usually today we tell people not, not to look for a mate that way. Don't just look for someone that fits, fits that because, you know, you got to take the rest with them, like the personality, you know? And I got woo back here. And the thing was, she looked for a mate, a companion that was everything she wanted and, you know, she found him. I would have never, ever, ever ever, ever, ever to infinitum, picked out Loki. <laughs> he knows it. I would have never picked out Loki for God. In fact, as I told you guys years ago when I started the channel, 
I remember seeing videos, well, not videos, I remember seeing books, you know, seeing him in books and thinking, this Loki, I don't like any of the Norse gods. I hated the Norse gods as a kid. I don't know why. Probably because in our textbooks, they made them look dirty and hairy and ugly. You'd just gotten through with the beautiful Greek gods who were intelligent and beautiful and sophisticated. Now you have these dirty, hairy barbarians and, uh, you know, they really played up the difference, especially in this area. And let's just say Loki wasn't treated too kindly. Nobody in their right mind would want to work with Loki <laughs> once they saw him in these, you know, how he was portrayed in the um, mythology units. And I don't even remember how the old man was portrayed or Thor or anyone. Loki's just the one that sticks out to me for some reason. I don't even remember hearing about Odin. It's a mysterious thing. Loki is the only one that stuck out to me. <laughs> Probably for a good reason. And, you know, looking back, I realize he was, he was always with me. And that's not to brag and say, ooh, I've known him longer than you. It's just, I think you do get gods that are always with you from day one. Maybe they all are, maybe you just realize with some, but anyhow. It was definitely him, and the other companion was always, and I would have never picked him, and depending on if you asked me before or after my coffee, I would have never, ever, 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 again to Affinitum, picked out Odin. Are you kidding me? I would have never picked out Odin as a companion. Today, if you would describe him as most people describe him, and I didn't know him, I'd be like, nope, hard pass, nope. And, and the thing is, they're the two that use 2020 for shaking out some of those family dramas, finally bringing them to the surface, finally telling me, hey, you feel lousy every fall, and you get even sicker at Christmas, because your family was so mentally and physically abusive that was like the one out if you're so terribly sick not i didn't make myself sick as a child i got sick from the unhealthy environment um that's your one way out you don't need to do it anymore now that doesn't mean like this instant everything's going to heal my body but they're like we're, we're we keep reenacting this drama until you figure it out they have, in their defense, tried telling me, and I just, I just wasn't listening. And then it just, it kind of came when I told you guys about acting out traumas today. And I told you, uh, was talking with one of you about, I don't even know what it was, and I just connected the dots, and I realized Loki and Odin were both leading me towards a path of healing and having my own spirituality but they lead in very different ways loki's fun and silly and wants to play video games and do big dramatic shots like this of a silly looking coin bank because you've seen this goofy ass looking thing it's not dramatic at all that i managed to do this good a job with it at least i'm patting myself on the back here you know it, it it's not intimidating looking it's goofy looking it's you know this bright marvel green color is what it is and you know He's the silly one. He's the one that usually, he can be serious. Shut up, Loki. But yeah, I got yeah. He can be serious at times, but he's usually goofy and silly and everything. And Odin can be goofy and silly too in his own way. But he will also set up a gauntlet for you to run through. And he's told me, and I, I need you guys to hear me on this, because we won't learn any other way. If you would learn the easy way, Odin would teach you the easy way. So would Loki. Odin had me go through all this rigmarole about a wolf pelt or a, a bear pelt or something. Not because he actually wanted it. Not because he wanted me to become a heathen or anything else. But he wanted me to get to the place where I would stop judging people, damn it. And through the research I did, I'm like, oh. You know, we all have this, especially in 2020, especially with animal rights. We're all like, those people are monsters. Those people love animals as much as we do. They, in their own way, all feel, the hunters, the trappers, the taxidermists, that they are doing their part to keep the animals they don't take happy and healthy because they're helping balance the population. They truly, honestly believe that. We truly, honestly were taught they are monsters, and vegans think both of us are monsters. And it's like, oh, if we would just mind our own damn business and not judge other people, they could just enjoy the kind of lifestyle they want. And with her doing the taxidermy, you know, and she's part of a field museum. 
which is where they take examples of all the animals and they preserve it, because we might not have these animals in the future, you know? That's why it's important to have a example of, you know, it, it wasn't a blessing for the wolf, but if an endangered animal gets hit by a car and dies, it's a blessing for the field museum because then they have the pelt and they have the skull. And, you know, she gives all these fascinating lectures on how most wolves, you know, out west, a great deal of the population, they're not even real wolves. They're koi wolves. Wo wo odies, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're a percentage coyote and a percentage wolf, but they're more coyote than anything else. So, you know, he wanted to get me to that, and he wanted to get me to see that he doesn't care really, at the end of the day, what we call ourselves. If you decide to be as a true because you truly feel called to that and you truly absolutely feel home there, fine. Same thing for heathen, same thing for Wiccan, same thing for people that bail out and go back to Christianity, same thing for people who become atheists. They want us to choose whatever path is healthiest and happiest for us. And you'll know it's happy because you feel like you just won the lottery or Maybe you are a little bit nervous or you're saying stuff like this is too good to be real. That's the right path for you. The right, the wrong path is the one where you're crying because you're giving up something or you're crying because you're taking on something you don't like or don't believe in or you're upset or you can't figure out half the beliefs. That's the wrong path for you. Um, there are always going to be mysteries with the gods. You know, they're all ineffable, Loki. I'm getting ineffable husbands back here. But, you know, um, they're going to at least make enough sense that in the places where it matters to you. And whether you want to say it was Jesus or God or Loki or the tree outside, somebody made sure I got that video to see that even though Loki and Odin are the exact opposite of what I would have picked for myself. I was raised Catholic. I wouldn't have picked pagan gods never, ever. Um, you know, they were exactly what I needed because beneath that stereotypical, in my time, rough, dirty, stupid, in the illiterate Viking, that was, I'm sorry, but that was the trope in my time. And the trope now of Marvel, you know, beneath that trope, there are gods worth knowing. You just have to be willing to stick it out and find the god underneath. So, you know, I'm I'm actually making this the evening before, but that'll mean I can sleep in tomorrow because you already have your video. And, you know, it, it was a blessing because now everybody's back in. Odin looked at me. I do my best thinking in the bath. You guys know that. And he goes, let me see if I got coffee here. One second, guys. One teeny tiny almost sip is what I got. Um, you know, Odin looked at me as, you know, I do my best thinking in the bath and I'm sorting stuff out. He says, are you finally ready to learn? You know, <laughs> you finally let ready to learn? And I was like, yeah. So he's back to being nice, Odin. You know, he, he will adjust to whatever you need. If I need bouncing off the walls crazy, Odin, he will do that. If I need cranky Odin, he will do that. If I can accept nice Odin and I can accept nice Loki, that's what I'll get. And he said, you know, we really don't need any more wolves. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I know we don't need any more wolves. Um, but, you know, I'm free now from the obligation of ever having to get a wolf pelt, a bear pelt. It wasn't about getting that. He did point out, you know, if I did fall into a little money, I did fall into a little money, maybe one of those faux throws, you know, those luxurious kind you know, for our, our Yule gift. And we would all have to agree, yes, that is like the best thing because it would be the only thing we could get this year. But, you know, it, it, I said, hey, if we get a second stimulus check, he can he can pick out one nice thing. He can either have something like that or get him a ridiculous plush wolf, get him th this little cute baby wolf we saw plush as well. I said, you know, pick something, dear, and, you know, that'll be our, it for you, because we have enough in the house. I have enough clothes for now. We have enough food to put on the table. We have the utilities paid. I said, I really don't want anything else. And almost any book in the world, you can find a PDF online or you can find the audiobook on YouTube. I said, I really don't need any more books. I don't want any more clothes. I'm, you know, I'm happy with what we have. 
five minutes from now, I'll see 20 games. I'm aware of that. But I said, I, I'm really happy with what we have. And I said, you know, I did have to do some growing up this year. I was kind of crabbing at Odin and I was kind of mad because I had this big list. Um, that's why I say I try to stay away from manifesting because I had this big list of all this stuff I wanted. I wanted a newer rig and I'm three, four generations behind in VR. I know it's only been two years, but I'm already like three or four generations obsolete. I wanted all this other stuff and all this other stuff. And, you know, the gods do the best they can with us. They really do. And they are ineffable, Loki. I got what back here, and you know they have strange ways. Um, we got our pizza yesterday, and we finished it up today. Do you know we got a um, mushroom pizza? And do you know what I saw today? I saw a mushroom recall, and I just kind of looked at Loki like, "Gee, thanks, sport, for not catching that one." He goes, "What? I'm not omnipotent." <laughs> I haven't died and gotten really sick, so I, I I guess we dodged the bullet. I don't think we had the right kind of mushrooms, but I was like, thanks, sport. And he's like, huh? So, you know, it's just they will lead you in mysterious ways, especially if Odin or Loki are leading you. They don't just lead you on a straight path, though they have both told me they would if you would walk on it. It's like they lead you off the path, through the bramble, through a swamp, up a tree, through a nest of bees, um, down, you know, down into the underworld, and then over here, and then you go to Disney World for a while, and then you go to some kind of scary place, and then you come back right to where you started. And you look at them, and you go, what was all that about? And Odin goes, yeah, well, it was fun, wasn't it? I would do this the easy way, but no, you have to have it the hard way. <laughs> And it came out in a story. Um, that story I wrote for you guys over on Patreon. I don't want to give you spoilers, but usually, whether it's my subconscious or it's God's talking through the story or whatever, um, you know, it was basically Odin saying to me, you always have to do things the hard way. You always have to find the hardest way and you always have to start, keep trying to prove yourself. He says, you do this because you came from a broken background. I understand that, but you do not have to prove yourself with the gods. You don't have to prove yourself with the gods. You really don't. We don't, you know, do what makes you happy. You know, don't don't think there's any, you know, wrong way to do things. There's what works and what doesn't. But you don't have to prove yourselves to the gods. We don't have to go do something that we wouldn't do or the gods won't accept us. It's not so. So, you know, you don't have to go, if you just want to worship the gods in your own way and do what you want to do, you don't have to pick up a label or pick up a way of doing things. They don't truly do not need altars. Altars are for us. Altars are so we have something pretty to look at. They appreciate them, sure. They appreciate the VR temples, but again, it's it's as much for me, if not more for me, than it is for them, because it gives us a place to hang out together. It gives us a place to kind of chart out our journey and you know I hadn't been playing VR for the last couple of days because I got done with the temples and you know we we all kind of realize that you know maybe we move on from making temples for a while and get back into VR and in most of the VR coming out lately has been duds or I would take you guys into something or we can't afford it one of the two <laughs> And, you know, we, we just need to make some new adjustments. And the thing is, we, we never spend time in the temples. We spend the time in the temples as we build them. Then they're done, and ugh, nobody wants to go in them. I I didn't even show you guys. I mean, keep meaning to show you guys one of the castles or the meat hall or something. But after they're built, and after you've run through them for a while, there's something about VR that you're like, oh, this is boring already. And everybody's kind of looking at the ground, doesn't want to tell everybody else, but we're all like, I'm bored. I don't go in here again. I've been in here five times. It's it's the magic of VR. It wears off super fast. So <laughs> I am making this the night before, but you guys are going to see this Sunday morning. So happy Sunday morning to you guys. Hope you like the photography. You can tell how seriously I took my photography. I was going to be best photographer ever. Oh my god. If you're going to be best photographer ever, don't think you're going to get your start on DeviantArt. I will tell you that from experience. And don't think you're going to get your start selling stuff online. I will tell you that from experience too. Go take a couple photography classes. Try to make some connections. Do that. 
join a photography club. Don't do what I did because it didn't work. So, <laughs> so if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.